This is Stu Epperson from the Truth Talk podcast, connecting current events, pop culture, and theology. And we're so grateful for you that you've chosen the Truth Podcast Network. It's about to start in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, and please share it around with all your friends. Thanks for listening, and thanks for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. All right, for my YouTube channel, If Not For God with Mike Zwick, just like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be alerted when we have our next video. Welcome to If Not For God. Stories of hopelessness that turn to hope. Here is your host, Mike Zwick. All right, if not for God with Mike Zwick, I've got my good friend Robbie Dillmore back here today. And, uh, you know, I'm, it, it's, it's exciting to be out. It's cold, it's raining, and they told us there was going to be snow, Robbie, but it looks like no snow this weekend. If not for God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, when, when Jesus died on the cross... Um, you know, he he took all of our sins, he took all of our pain, he took all of our illnesses, and uh, he nailed them to the cross. Um, I love Isaiah 53. I was actually in Isaiah uh, 53 earlier today, and I love the verse where it says, by his stripes we are healed. But here's some other verses about, about healing the sick. Uh, this is what Jesus, I believe he tells us to do. Matthew 10, 8, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Uh, Matthew 10, 1, and he called to his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. James 5, 14, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And I tell you what, Robbie, I was talking to you a little bit before, but I'm I'm excited, man. I've, I've seen some healings recently. I've, uh, you know, Jesus had a few things to say about faith as well, Robbie, and I, I I've been praying for the sick for a long time, praying, 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 and I would see some results or whatever, but recently it seems to be just about every single person I'm praying for, especially knee problems. I'm seeing <laughs> knee problems and back problems go away immediately. I was uh, was actually over in Elon, North Carolina yesterday, and it was an older guy who was on dialysis, and I was talking to him. I said, well, what do you need prayer for? And I told him about all these people who have been healed, and he said, well, my knee, I've had problems with my knee for the longest time, and I go to the VA and this and that. I said, well, I'll pray for you right now. I said, I just want to pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that this knee is healed and I cast out any sickness in Jesus' name, amen. I said, I said, stand up and start walking around like you normally do and tell me where the pain is. And he says, oh my gosh, it's gone. <laughs> the pain was gone. I prayed for, uh, you just saw the video. I prayed for a lady, uh, another lady yesterday. They were neighbors, right, live right around the corner from this guy. And uh, when I prayed for prayed for her, it was uh, husband and wife, and I prayed for her. Uh, her she had knee pain and leg pain all the way down her leg, and her uh, her knee pain and her leg pain was better. And I asked her husband, and and I, I prayed for. I said, "What do you need prayer for?" He said, "I need prayer for my back." And I prayed for his back to be better. And I and I asked him, "How are you feeling?" He goes, "Oh my gosh!" He said, "It's much better." He said, "I haven't been able to move around like this." And he was moving from side to side. He said, "I haven't been made, able to move around like." this for a while. And so it's exciting. And I love to see the healing hand of God. But I tell you what, man, it, it has nothing to do with Mike Zwick. All I do is say a few words and, and well, I'm, I'm done. I, I love the fact that you said, but it doesn't work on my wife <laughs> <laughs> and other people that, you know, I, I, you know, that's the interesting thing that, you know, ultimately that proves the point that God's the one who decides and and quite often it may have something to do with whether or not your wife is thinking, oh, that's just Mike, <laughs> you know, or, or your friends think, oh, that's just wicked, mm -hmm. you know. And, but it's interesting. I remember when I, you know, uh, Pastor Little came to say he was, you know, in my office, I was struggling with cancer, thought I was dying. Um, I had no faith whatsoever. The, when he showed up, I thought he was a nut. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, uh, don't worry, Pastor Little. I, I know you're uh, you're you're in a better place now, but a lot of people think I'm a nut too. So. Well, it's just a point. I thought he was a nut, and and he knows that. And I've told him, and uh, because you know, I had no idea of laying on in hands, anointing with oil. He did the whole the whole thing, man. And I was like, what is up with this? And 
But, you know, when my tumors all got gone within 48 hours, you, you know, he had my total attention. You paid attention. <laughs> <laughs> and you said you had had other people praying for you at that time. But you said, I remember you said there was something different. Right. There was a, a, a bit of a fire or something that I sensed that day. But no doubt it was not my faith that, that from my standpoint, there was no no real belief on my part. So he was the one who had the faith. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's God. I mean, I, I, I just think, like you said, you don't know what that's going to be. But the cool thing is, and I think it's really beyond cool, that it's a, it's a, it's a physical issue that is pointing to a lot larger one, right? Because it's one thing to be, you know, like the way that Pastor Quartz, my old pastor, used to say, he goes, if we prayed for near as many people to get into heaven as we prayed for them to stay out of it, we'd be in a whole lot better shape, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, the the spiritual healing, so I, I got to tell you this story that's going to lead up to, this is all about healing in its own way is I was studying the book of Habakkuk, as you know, and these people are going to be carried into captivity like sand is what actually it says in the first chapter of Habakkuk. And so I started to look at that word captivity in Hebrew, and I realized that the part of it was inflammation. What? They would, that it would be hot. If you, in other words, if you get carried into captivity, mm -hmm. there's some fire involved in that. And so I said, well, let me see if I can find that word. So I, I, I study that word and I look in my concordance and I find, wow, that word's all over this passage in Deuteronomy that talks about literal inflammation like fevers and what that was called consumption back in the day. I don't know if you know, but COPD, emphysema, those things, they used to be called con consumption. Right. And, and so when you look, that really meant was they didn't know what it was. <laughs> they actually knew what it was. Listen to what it is. We, you hear it today, but you'd never have put it to your mind to think what they're saying in English. It's inflammation. And COVID, it's inflammation. Mm. And so when you think about it, inflamed, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a simple solution. If somebody's got a fever, right? They're running a fever 103. What, what are you going to tell them to do? Take a couple aspirin and drink plenty of fluids. Yeah. What do you do for a fire? You pour water on it. Well, if you got spiritual information, I'm just saying that, that Jesus told the lady at the well, you might remember it. Some people call her the woman at the well, but I think she was the lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, what did he tell her? If you drink from this water, you'll never be thirsty again. That's kind of important because how often are we dealing with spiritual information? Like your spirit is all inflamed. I, I promise you that the, and I, I think about this every night that I go for comfort food all over the place because my spirit is inflamed, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in the morning, because I've spent all that time in the Word of God, I don't have as bad inflammation. Yep. That's it because that living Word, that water, it, it cuts down. I bet you like that. If it, In the morning, did you notice that, you, that you're just, your spirit's a lot more peaceful than it is in the evening after you've been worn out by four or five shenanigans? Makes sense to me. Or, you know, w when you say in the morning, my morning lasts for about 15 minutes before the kids are screaming. And it's, <laughs> so right. what I have to do is that's interesting. I have to find my quiet time. I have to make my kind. I'm not going to find it. I have to make it. <laughs> you have to set aside time to uh, be with the Lord. You have to set, it, set aside time to be quiet. One of the things that I've seen, and this is one of the interesting things about healing that I've noticed. Matthew chapter 11 and starting in verse 20, I'm looking at the ESV. He says, then he began, and this is Jesus, then he began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chor Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will be exalted to heaven. You will be brought down to Hades, for if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable on the day of judge on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. And this is what I've seen. Uh, do you remember the 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 passage where uh, there were the ten lepers? Of course, and they all got healed, right? And they went away, but only one of them came back. So I've seen some different reactions when I prayed for people and I seen them healed. Um, the people that I mentioned just now, both the couple and the other guy, they were both excited. They were praising the Lord. You know, they were really happy. I've seen some other people. It's just like a blank stare on their face. And it's just like, 
nothing. It's like, hold on, the Lord just healed you and you're just, you know, hey, you know, maybe you say, I, I, I don't, you know, I'm not judging anyone, but I, when I read that verse, it was at Matthew eleven twenty, or when I read that passage, what I hear Jesus saying is, is that if you weren't going to repent, if you weren't going to surrender your life to Christ, if you weren't going to say yes to Jesus and, and uh, submit to his authority and accept him as your Lord and Savior, from that passage, he's saying it would have been better had you not have been healed. So <laughs> I feel like when I pray for people and if they are healed and then they go, yeah, I still don't want Jesus. Ooh, it, it might have been better for them had I not even have prayed for them to be healed because then they wouldn't have seen it. Well, the good news is <laughs> that you don't know the end of the story, right? And, and so it's like, well, I was a baby Christian, no doubt, when when Pastor uh, Little, you know, healed me. But I can assure you, if I was not, if you'd seen the look on my face when he got walked out of the office that day, you'd go, that guy is not even close to impressed by what just happened, although what just happened saved my physical life. Mm. Right. And I, I, I believe I was saved at that point, but I had not yet had any grasp of what was actually going on or any sense of thanksgiving for what had transpired. But those things, they sit in your mind and they begin to bubble around. I was thinking about it today. Right. That I remember the first answer to prayer I ever had was when, you know, my son Leslie had run away and I, you know, he pulled up in the driveway. Talk about a miracle. Right. Like Jesus told me I got this and, and my son is, is recovered for me. If there was ever a point in time where somebody should have said, thank you, man, Lord, that's awesome. That's awesome. But you know, I didn't do it that night. I, I didn't surrender to Christ for probably four years after that. But see, it just bubbled around in there like, like you know, Prego spaghetti sauce. It was in there. <laughs> and And other things would happen and I would recall like, man, that maybe that stuff is true. Maybe, 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 you know, so, you know, like they say, you, you plant seeds, you know, Paul is watered and, and all that stuff, but God makes it grow. And so over a period of time, you know, you don't know, you, you, you know, you don't know what, you know, God's doing with people. And I, you know, I, I love all the things that I don't pay attention to, but all of a sudden God starts to bring them back like dominoes. They start tripping over in my mind and like, oh, wow, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that all. Yeah, there must be something to this. And so you're just one domino, man. <laughs> Once again, their healing has nothing to do with Michael Zwick. I've just said a few words. Um, have you met Christy Real? Sure. You know, you met her at the uh, the revi revival, right? Right. Oh, yeah. You probably knew her before that, though, right? I'd met her a couple times, obviously, because, you know, I know her family well. Cameron Horner. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's her sister. Um, but what she, I did a video with her, and she said something that was really cool, and it helped me when I'm praying for the sick. She said she was praying for the sick, and everybody was getting healed. And she said all of a sudden she was stopped reading. She was reading her Bible 12 hours a day. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah, getting some water there. <laughs> yeah. But all of a sudden she wasn't reading her Bible as much and she wasn't seeing as many people healed. And so she asked the Lord, she said, Lord, it, where, you know, what do I, do I, do I have the gift of healing? That's what she asked. And she said, the Lord told her no. And she goes, thank God. <laughs> and no kidding. She, she started praying for people after that and around 150 people straight were healed because she realized it wasn't her. Right, 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 right. And I, I'm not saying that it was, I mean, you're just thinking, or oh, we have this expectation, right? In fact, there was a great podcast I heard this week. It came out of Wild at Heart where they talked about expectations lead to resentment, right? So, when we see something that we go, oh, well, if that were me or whatever, we have, we set up this expectation, but then because they, whatever happened didn't meet our expectation, then we, there's some kind of resentment that's down in there. The interesting thing is it's not even spoken, right? You're, you're harboring it. And, and actually um, Morgan Snyder was talking about this, that his father was a doctor. And so all the time he was growing up, his father was so busy, he never had time. He didn't come home and that he wasn't either eat or sleeping. And so his mother did all the cooking all the time in the kitchen. So his expectation was that a wife would do all that stuff in the kitchen and he wouldn't have to. Oh, man, I, I feel a few jokes coming along here. <laughs> no, no, no. So, it, so 
he said, you know, after I got married, I knew that a good husband would help out in the kitchen, but every time I had to do it, it met an unspoken expectation. And it took, he said, it took years, really, for the Holy Spirit to get him to see that he had this expectation that his, his own mind didn't know that he had an expectation and it was leading to resentment. And, and so I can't help but wonder, God, show me, you know, my hidden expectations, because really, as we end up with these expectations, we can resent things that we don't even, we know aren't necessarily right, you know? Oh, yeah. And there, there is, uh, you know, Christy also said in, in the last time we talked, she said, Mike, she said, I found something out. She said, if I'm looking for sin in people, if I'm looking for something wrong, she says, I'm going to find it, <laughs> you know, and it's like Abraham Lincoln. That was a quote from Pollyanna. You never heard it. Uh-oh. Really? Mm-mm. It's one of my favorites. Okay. So if you, I think the exact quote from Abraham Lincoln, and it was on Pollyanna's locket in the movie, mm-hmm. it said, if you're looking for the bad in people, you will surely find it. Mm-hmm. That was what Abraham, so she, you couldn't be more right. That, But that's really, really unbelievably sad when you think about it, that most people don't get to hear near as often, you know, what's wonderful about them than they do about what's what's bad about them. And so, it, you know, I I did this Sunday school lesson. I don't know if I've ever told you this one on the air. It's, it's my classic story where I had the students – I'll take this piece of paper and put it on their back. And everybody walked around. I said, I want you to write on their back how you see Jesus in that other student. Oh, wow. And so what I thought was going to be a 10-minute exercise, these students went wild. And so for an hour, they wrote on each other's backs how they saw Jesus, right? Okay. And I taught these students for like two years. Well, about four or five years later, maybe three years later, we had a reunion. And at that reunion, you know, we taught all these great Sunday school lessons all these years, Michael. You know, I always, somebody said, well, of all the Sunday school lessons we taught over all those years, what was your favorite? And this girl says, well, you know, that time Robbie had us right on each other's back. I still have my paper. Yeah. And then another girl says, oh, I still have my paper. And a guy said, I still have my paper. And it turned out almost everybody in the class still had their paper. Why? Because we need encouragement. We never hear yeah. how we look like Jesus. We never hear, you know, whatever. But it's fascinating to me that that's, of all the lessons we taught, That's a. have never forgotten it. You never forgot that one. The, uh, you know, it, it's funny, Proverbs 18, and, and sometimes people can take verses and they can kind of go with them and get a little out there. But I, I love this verse, and starting in verse 20, actually, but Proverbs 18, 21 is the verse. But it says, from the fruit of, of his mouth, a man's belly is filled with the, with the harvest from his lips. He is satisfied. It says that life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. I thought it was interesting that right after it says that life and death is in the power of the tongue, it says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yeah, not to mention all that fruit of the tongue if you're married. <laughs> yeah, they, there, there's kind of a connection there. You know, if, uh, you know, people people need encouragement, and, and especially with our spouses, with our with our loved ones, with our intimate family, our immediate family, and it, I guess it's intimate, we know them closer, we're closer to them. Um, it's so easy to criticize the people that we love the most. But the people that we love the most, they need to hear encouragement from us uh, probably more than anybody else because what your wife says to you, Robbie, means a whole lot more than if I say something to you. Uh, what your son says to you, Robbie, means a whole lot more to you than uh, than what your than what what I would say to you or even Stu would say to you. And so, if you're listening right now, I, I want you to think about that. That you know, are you encouraging your spouse? Are you encouraging your children? Are you encouraging your parents? And I'm not here to throw a guilt trip on you. If you're not, start now. Well, the beautiful thing about grace, and you know how I love that word, mm-hmm. is it has everything to do what we're talking about. Because when you break down the word grace, which interestingly is Noah spelled backwards, okay, so grace has to do with somebody that you're united with in some way, family, whatever, that in relationship, and then the letter none, which would mean that you have unbelievable faith in them. And you can tell when somebody's looking at you whether or not they have faith in you, whether or not they like you, yeah. right? Whether or not that, that, that they want 
to be actually your friend. Yeah. And interestingly, you know, that is grace and that there's tremendous healing in grace because when you feel like people believe in you, yeah. they trust you, yeah. they want you around. Yeah. And, and if they'll speak it. Yeah. There is something about that spoken word. I was, uh, we were actually praying for uh, an older couple today, a friend of mine, Jason and I were, and uh, the guy, we were praying for his healing, and I think his wife said something, oh, his toe's moving a little bit there, and Jason said that life and death is in the power of the tongue, and uh, it's powerful. The words that come out of our mouths are powerful. Um, you know, I, I heard years ago, there was a pastor over in Raleigh, and he said, you know, there's there's all these things that are wrong with the prosperity gospel. And he said, a lot of these, you know, guys or a lot of these people, they're going to different places and it's not to share the gospel, but it's just to make money. And he said, but one of those things that those guys have right is that the mind leads the body. Um, and so, and especially the words that come out of your mouth, they, they can lead you. And so when I, you've been in sales, I've been in sales, but when I, when I first got into sales, um, they would teach us, they say every day when you're out there, you want to say out, you want to speak out positive phrases out loud, out loud. And I was like, this is crazy. This is silly. Well, now here I am 41 years later, (laughs) spitting out positive phrases out loud, not just while I'm on the sales field, but sometimes when the enemy starts to attack, you see, you know, I can, I can kind of be thinking something and and maybe listening to you at the same time, but Robbie, it's really hard for me to be speaking out loud and, and, and for me to be thinking something at the same time as well. And so it's powerful. You know, you start to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I've got faith. Increase my faith. It's, it's these little things that you can say out loud. I've seen it make a difference. Yeah, God literally spoke the world into resistance, into, into existence mm-hmm. with words, right? I mean, expression is exactly life and death in, in so many different ways. That, But the other thing that I think about as you say that is that you know the incredible thing in my own life of when i speak something that that is a prayer out loud yeah that you have to be in present time yeah. right you can't speak in the past and you can't speak in the future <laughs> yeah and so as you speak that prayer or whatever it is that you're saying it brings you into the moment that you're in because everything that, that I'm saying right now is right this very second. So if you're going to listen, you got to be with me right this minute. That's it. But the person speaking is in the moment because they're the one that's speaking. And, and so as you get yourself into present time, because a lot of the time the reason I'm afraid mm-hmm. is I'm stuck in the past. Yeah. Or I'm scared of the future. Mm-hmm. Right? Either of those are not, I'm not in present time. And so as you begin to speak... And you come into the present, yeah. which is fascinating that the letter pay is what the mouth is in Hebrew, and it has to do with being present. Yeah. And so if you actually heard from God today in any way, shape, or form, guess what? That was a present in the present yeah. of his presence. Oh, saying. man. <laughs> I, uh, when, when we started selling books door to door, I, I remember there was, a, there was this trainer and he said, if you've got one foot in the future or one foot in tomorrow and one foot in yesterday, he says, you're, you're, you're peeing on today. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, th- there is, you know, I, I, I love, I love healing. I love the water. And we're going to talk about that on the next episode, I believe. But, you know, there is something about having faith. There is, and I've seen a difference when I believe something is going to happen. And they even taught us this when we were, we were out selling, they said, there's, we can't explain it because they weren't, remember this wasn't a Christian company, but they said, we can't explain it, but there's something about having faith and believing that you're going to make the sale. And then it actually happens. Well, Hebrews 11 has something to say about that. It says, really? now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had not taken him. For before he was taken, he had, he had this testimony that he pleased God, and here it is, 
but without faith, it is impossible impossible (laughs) to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let me ask you this. You can have faith for healing and I believe you'll see see healings. You can have faith that uh, you're going to be successful in business and you're going to have success. I believe you will. But what about where you're going to spend eternity? (laughs) Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says that nobody comes to the Father but by me. And if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to take a minute right now, and Robbie's going to pray with you. Oh, Lord, I I am so grateful for this opportunity to say, I really believe that you are the Son of God. I have that faith that you really did die for me and that you really did pay the price for all that I've done. And, And I also believe that you can clean that up with your blood and make me a new creation and that I'll be cleansed and be able to spend eternity with you. And I ask this, that you would help my faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, if not for God. All right, for my YouTube channel, If Not For God with Mike Zwick, just like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So you'll be alerted when we have our next video. This is the Truth Network.